Good morning, family, and welcome to another online service of Redeemer One House Ministry on the YouTube channel. For this is truly another day that our Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And from the rising of the sun and the going down of the same, we know that our God is worthy to be praised. Again, good morning, family, and welcome to another one of our online services. As we greet you this morning with blessings on this Father's Day, as well as Juneteenth weekend. For family, we here at Redeemer One House Ministry, where our mission is to convey to all of God's children that His sovereignty is still sufficient, that His grace and mercy is still afforded us, and that His Holy Word is still alive and true. We are an inclusive ministry, and we stand firm on what's stated throughout the Word of God, that if anyone calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And with that said, family, would you take a moment just to bow with me for a prayer? Oh, merciful Father God, we come to you this morning, oh Father God, with just a, a celebration and thanking you, oh God, for showing us another day, blessing us with another opportunity, oh God, to give you glory. And so, Father God, we ask this morning, Lord, that if you'll just encompass our spirits with love and with joy and with peace, oh Father God, so that we may carry out this day, touching the lives of some other spirit, O oh Father God, being a reflection of the spirit that you have bestowed in our hearts. And Father God, it, 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 it goes without saying, Father God, that this morning we understand, Lord, that, that we have uh, people of God who are in need. Uh, people of God this morning, O oh Father God, who just just needs to hear a word to lift their spirits, encourage their hearts, and, and to uh, redeem uh, what you have called them to do, O oh Father God, in a mighty way, Lord. And so we ask this morning, O oh Father God, if you'll just touch any bereaved heart, uh, touch any heavy hearts, O oh Father God, touch, touch any heart, O oh Father God, who may have dwindled and lost faith, O oh Father God. And then, Lord, we just, we just want to give a, a, a huge thank you, God, for, for, again, all of our medical professionals throughout the country and throughout this world, God. For we know, oh, Father God, that we're in a storm, but we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and we can see your majesty at work. So we thank you, God. And, oh, Father God, it goes, Father God, without saying that on this day, we thank you, Father God, for forgiveness of our sins, both seen and unseen. Glory to your name, God, and thank you, Father God, for what you sent your Son to do on the cross on our behalf. So it's in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, that we ask these things, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again, family. I want to lift up a word this morning uh, which will be coming from uh, scripture of 1 Samuel uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 31 through 37 uh, it's 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 31 through 37 and I'm reading this morning out of the NIV Bible version and God, holy words, reads, What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. And he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant 
has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, stuck it, rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Uh, family, this morning I want to lift up a word uh, simply entitled, How do you know if you have a game on spirit? How do you know? How do you understand? How do you receive? How do you acknowledge if you have a game on spirit? And family on this, this Father's Day, it would behoove me to receive in the spirit that a father to a child is one of the most important and instrumental relationships to that child. It would behoove me to receive that uh, the father's role is unlimited towards that child that sometimes with the the role of the father is simply to build a bond with the child uh, maybe that's uh, spending time and and uh, going out to sporting events or entertainment events and and just building that bond with the child and that's important. And then also, uh, uh, maybe it's from a father's standpoint is to have that child feel comfortable to come talk to his or her father about things that maybe they don't wish to share with others. And that's important because that's where a father builds up the trust with that child. But family, this morning I have also received in the spirit that one of the most important roles of influence for a child from a father is to prepare that child for this life. Is to, to prepare that child that, that sometimes when you, uh, when you make plans, sometimes your plans doesn't materialize in the same manner in which you request it. Sometimes when you when you have goals and you have uh, uh, things you're pursuing in life, sometimes those things get recategorized and you receive something that, that was not even part of the list. But it's the role and the influence of the father just to remind the child of this. 
that God's purpose over your life is greater than your plans. His purpose. His purpose and his 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 majesty and his uh, uh, his favor and his grace and his mercy uh, they're tied into to what God has willed over your life and and maybe sometimes it didn't tie into what you planned but still being a an earthly father we must prepare our children to understand that God still loves you it's just that his purpose overrides your plan. And brothers and sisters, this became abundantly clear to me on April 25th of 2018. Uh, because as I reflect back on that day, uh, I was blessed in the spirit to be able to witness my brother in Christ, my best friend, a brother from another mother. I was able to witness this role of influence that we're discussing. Because it was on that day, April 25th of 2018 it was it was on that day in a in a hospital room in a hospital room where I was blessed to witness his his wife and children and, and his parents and and friends and family being in that hospital room and anticipating a visit from the oncologist anticipating a, a diagnosis from the doctor. And it was on that day, uh, brothers and sisters, where there, when the doctor entered the room, uh, it was an extreme level of silence because we're anticipating uh, the results of all of these tests. On that day, the doctor enters the room and, and he is addressing Mr. White. He is addressing Mr. White with the, the diagnosis, uh, the understanding of what that entails, the, the uh, 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 rehab or, or, or should I say the medical uh, planning that's that, that is uh, being set forth for Mr. White. Uh, the doctor is there and he is, he's acknowledging in front of, in front of his wife and, and in front of his children, in front of his parents, in front of his loved ones. The doctor is acknowledging we have gotten your diagnosis. And family, I was again so blessed in the spirit because once the diagnosis was conveyed to Brother White, everyone in the room remained quiet. But Mr. White responded abruptly. He responded with great enthusiasm in the spirit. And his response was simple. Cancer, okay. Game on. His response to, to everything that had been presented to him that day, everything that, that entailed what the diagnosis meant, everything that, that led up to, to, to this anticipated visit from his doctor. Uh, there was no second guessing by Brother White. Uh, there was no blaming God for what had been communicated. Uh, there was no uh, feeling sorry for myself in the spirit. He simply responded, cancer? 
Okay. Game on. And brothers and sisters, I, I tell you this morning that uh, I was blessed in the spirit. I'm, I'm pretty sure like everyone there to just see a man of great faith, uh, uh, a mighty man of God being able to, to leave that room and still, still hold his head high to the Lord and thank God for all of the blessings. But also more important, he was able to claim victory. Because the Bible says by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. But Brother White was able to claim victory uh, that his healing was already proclaimed. My family, when time had gone on and, and the support is pouring in for Brother White, uh, you, you got so many people who who wanted to lend uh, a shoulder, uh, who wanted to lend uh, a hand uh, to be a helper, who wanted to, to convey scripture, who wanted to pray over him, who wanted to anoint his head. Uh, there were so many different things and so many people God was sending in support of Brother White. And it was in this interim of time that I wanted to understand for my own acknowledgement what did the game on really mean? Uh, brothers and sisters, I wanted to get, like most people, I wanted to have my own understanding. I, I was thanking God for, for, for the spirit of courage that he gave my brother White. I was, I was praising God because I knew God was, was going to fix the situation. I was, I was praising God because I was uh, so reminded that, that all God was doing was setting him up for a big testimony to give God more glory. But, but brothers and sisters, I needed to understand what the game on mean in the spirit. And then over the interim of time, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and it said that the game on simply means God on me every day ejecting negativity. He said, he said, brother, uh, 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 if you want to know what it means, here it is. It's, it's God on me every day objecting negativity. Now, family, I, I understand. I understand that, that God already, he already has an armor for us. But I wanted to understand that the, that the armor he, he speaks of, that God speaks of in, in the book of Ephesians. Uh, 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 what he speaks of, he talks about the helmet of salvation. Uh, uh, he, he talks about the, the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, he talks about the shield of faith. He talks about the, the belt of truth. And then he talks about the shoes of joy and peace. I understand what the word says in Ephesians chapter 6. It, it says that God says that he's prepared an armor. And so when I understood that and God gave me the understanding for game on, I simply knew that game on was just a reminder in my spirit of what God has already prepared. Come on, somebody. And so it's, it's become each and every day. Each and every day, I, I wear my bracelet. I wear my bracelet as a reminder uh, that it doesn't ma really matter what the devil throws at me. I can tell the devil game on. Uh, it's a reminder that it doesn't really matter uh, if I'm being attacked by, by, by friends and foes. I can, I can look at them and say game on. Uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter to me that if the, if the enemy wants to come into my house and disrupt my house, I can look at the enemy anytime and just say, game on. It's, it's the armor of God. 
It's the arm of God in which he, he gives us to, to, to acknowledge him, but also to be a reminder that the victory is already ours. Come on, somebody. Game on. What does it really mean in the spirit? Game on. And family, this is, this is the story, the parable that we're addressing this morning. In this story of young David, it's a game on moment. Uh, in this story of young David, you, you have the, the, the prophet, the prophet Seer, uh, Samuel, making a trip over to the house of Jesse, and, and he's, looking, he's looking for someone who can take up this kingship. Uh, he's looking for someone who, he's looking for someone who can, who can now be the, the leader, the great leader of Israel. But it was in the midst of this, this pursuit of young David that, 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 that Jesse got besides himself. Because when Samuel came, he didn't know the name, but he knew the person he was looking for because it, it said it over in 1 Samuel chapter 13. He was looking for the one who was simply after God's own heart. But when the prophet Samuel showed up, and he, he's, conveying, he's conveying what his search is all about, uh, Jesse starts pulling in his boys. He starts going through their, their physical presentation and, and, uh, and going through the fact that they've been great soldiers. He's, he's going through the list of his sons. Oh, but what Jesse didn't know is that God never looks at the outer appearance. Uh, what Jesse didn't realize was that, that God doesn't care what kind of car you drive. Uh, what Jesse didn't know is God's not too concerned with what you got in your bank account. God was looking for the one who was after his own heart. Uh, so when, when young David got identified, when young David got identified and knew that he had been anointed, at this time we have this, this big angry giant. This big angry giant. This big angry giant just shows up abruptly, and, and this big angry giant, nine feet tall, uh, this big angry giant who was uh, the big bully in the Philistine army, uh, this giant was, was challenging everybody. Uh, this giant was was simply making it clear that, that there is no man capable of defeating him. Uh, we got some giants. We got some giants in our lives. We got, we got sometimes that a giant may show up and, and we can't see our way out of it. We can't, we can't see our way uh, uh, getting past the situation. Uh, we can't see our way overcoming the doctor report. But, but all you got to do is ask God for that arm and say, game on. Uh, we, we, we got things that just, just come into our lives abruptly. Don't hang your heads. Don't give up the battle. You simply say, as loud as you can, glory be to God, game on. And so family, this, this, big, this big Philistine bully, this big Philistine bully, he is, he is in challenge mode. He's, He's challenging everybody to, to come and be and be destroyed in his presence. But I love, I love family what the Bible shows with young David. Uh, we, we look here and we, we can go right here, family, in verses 34, 35, and 36. And 34, 35, and 36, it says, But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. What David is saying, family, is that uh, I've always been faithful. What, what David is, say, is saying, family, is that, is, that, is that God did not place the spirit of fear and timidity in me. 
What, what he's telling Saul is that you need to check my resume with the Lord. Uh, we got a personal relationship. Uh, he comes when I call. Uh, Sometimes he may not get there when I ask for him, but he's always on time. David is showing Saul that I know my level of faith. He, he's making it known to Saul that game on. And look here, family, look, 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 look right below those scriptures of 35, 36. Uh, look here in verse 37. Verse 37, it says that, and this is David. Now, David is, David is acknowledging, David said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion. And the paw of the bear will also rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's a that's a man with great faith. I know, I know when, when Samuel showed up, uh, he, he saw a, a young boy, a young teenage boy, and, and, and probably scratched his head a couple times saying, God, is this the one you're looking for? Is, is this the one you're chosen? I know. I know, I know family, is, it, it, it was probably that David was not the conventional look. That David was not the conventional appearance. But it's something about that when God puts his hands on you, you ain't got to look like they what they expect because they don't know who is driving the force. When God places his his, his hands on your life, uh, uh, maybe you don't have the buildup or the resume or the educational level of that, that, that what they're, they're expecting, what they're anticipating, but, but, but they didn't know who, who's your, your ultimate source of strength. Uh, they didn't know that, that you stand firm on the scripture. Lean not on my own understanding, but just trust God with all of my heart and soul. It was a game on moment. And now family, once, once David has had this conversation with Saul, it, 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 it goes with saying there in verse 37 that, that, that after all of these rebuttals from Saul, that he agreed. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Now, family, uh, 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 to, to get David on his way, Saul offered him his armor. And David refused. Uh, David says, all I need is five smooth stones. He says, all I need is this, this little slingshot. Uh, David says, I got everything I need because I'm walking in the spirit. David said, game on. And so when David gets to the presence of this nine-foot bully of the spirit, even Goliath looks down upon David. He is insulted. He's insulted by the fact that, that David doesn't measure up to what he's expecting a fight to be about. David doesn't measure up physically as to what he views as someone who could challenge him. David didn't measure up in terms of his experience of being a, a, a well-rounded soldier. Uh, uh, what the Philistine didn't know is that David was a man after God's own heart. What this Philistine did not realize, the power of the Holy Spirit. What this Philistine did not take into consideration that, that David truly had the game on spirit. David had already called on the Lord before he got to this Philistine. God, on me, every day, objecting negativity. It was a game on moment. And family, as the battle initiated, it went forth there to the point to where when David took these smooth stones, struck the nine-foot giant to the ground. David stood over him with confirmation of decapitation. He decapitated him, stood over him, and proclaimed the power of God. 
That's what God wants from us this morning, family. He, he understands that a lot has happened recently. But God wants us to stand over our Goliaths. God wants us to step on our bullies. God wants us to, 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 to just be a firm position over our enemies' attacks. God wants us to have a game on spirit. You know, family, I, I often review Psalms 23. It absolutely may be the, my favorite song. It's something that I just like to review because I can see where God is just kind of navigating my path. On the good days, on the bad days, and the, the days I don't feel like being bothered, I, I can see that God is navigating my path and God gets me inspired to go out each day and to give him glory. I, I, I look at it, I look at the, the, the Psalms and, and it says that, it says, uh, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. It says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. It says, he, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He says that he leaves me beside still waters. He says that it, it restores my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you can just embody that into your spirit this morning, what that, what that verse is saying is that, that, that God knows when I need rest. He knows when I need covering. He knows when I need to, to come into the temple. He knows when, 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 when I'm, I'm getting off the, the spiritual path and that he needs to bring me back in so that I can give him glory for his name's sake. I just love what Psalms 23 just, just reminds us in the spirit of how much God loves us. Look here at, look here at, verse, at verse number four. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil, for thou is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Well, family, I tell you, if you can't get happy off that, I don't know if there's any other more powerful psalm that'll speak to your spirit. Because what that is saying is that, is that in this life, we should not be fearful of anything. God's already sent his son to pay the cost. God is saying that in this life, you need not be fearful of anything. And God reminds us, not only because I'm telling you my power, he said, he said right here, he says that, that, that I'm always with you. It says, for thou is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Brothers and sisters, to know that no matter what the doctor says, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter what my what my my, my bank account shows. It, it, it really doesn't matter about uh, any attacks that uh, uh, I may see on a daily basis. God is saying that through it all, He's with me. And family, this is what motivates us to have that game on spirit, because we know we're armored. By the love of God. Watch this. It says in, in verse 5, it says, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup run over. Oh, glory be to God, family. What he's saying is that you need to stop tripping about your enemies. You need to stop tripping about people you think that are that they're trying to attack you. You need to not worry about those that you may call some of the people who don't mean you well. God is saying right here in scripture that you need them. You need them not just so you can pray for their deliverance, but you need them to get your blessings. Because God knows that with those attacks, 
All he's doing is just raising you up in the spirit, but you always prepare because it's game on. God knows. He knows. He knows, families, that we're always, we're always in the spirit of the Lord. We're always walking in that spirit of game on. Bring it on. Whatever you got, I got God behind me. Whatever you're trying to, to, to talk about my past, it's okay. I got Jesus with me. Well, whatever you're trying to say that, that maybe I don't measure up to what you think uh, I should be, it, 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 it's okay. He's shown me over and over and over again what he's done in the Bible. And if I just look at all the different people of the Bible, I realize that they weren't perfect. I can realize that they had flaws. I can realize that they fell short. But God just reminded, like he says in, in, in the book of John, he says, uh, if you just confess your sins, that he's, he's, he's worthy and he's just to forgive you of your sins, but also to cleanse you. And family, look here. Look here, I'm almost done. It says, surely, in verse 6, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Family, I can tell you that's praise. That's praise to know that God says that each and every day, new mercy and new grace. God is letting me know that when this day is over, when this journey ends, that he's got a place for me in glory. God is letting me know that, that it really doesn't matter all of the things that I may encounter on a daily basis. He's telling me that uh, the, the new mercy and new grace is sufficient. But he's also reminding me that he has a place for rest for me in glory. Come on, somebody. It's what does it really mean to have a game on spirit? God on me every day objecting negativity. And brothers and sisters, as I as I come to my close, as always, I pray, looking back over this word, that it blesses your spirit to understand that that God has not left your presence. That you still have your power. You still have the ability to touch those who don't even mean you any good. You have the armor of God. You have that game on spirit. That nothing on this earth can 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 move you off of what God has ordained for your life. Came on. And as always, brothers and sisters, I just say that if you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself, that today is a good day to get to know him. Uh, he, he is worthy. He is worthy to spend time with. Uh, he is worthy to, to praise him. He is worthy to let him be the chief navigator over your life. So I ask this morning that if you don't know him for yourself, if you would just confess with the tongue and believe in your heart that he is your Lord and Savior, I welcome you to the kingdom. And also, family, it goes without saying that I always pray that the word God has given me to share, that it not only blesses your spirit, but you can take the word and go out and be a blessing to others. God bless you. Have a great day.